What's going on, everybody? Hope you are having a wonderful week so far. So it's podcast time, and this week I sat down with the one and only Lee K. Um, I've known Lee for a while now. Um, known her from uh, techno. She's an amazing producer, amazing DJ. Played a few shows with me, and she is coming on tour with me on the New Generation tour to a few dates as well. Um, so I thought I'd get on and we'd just have a nice little talk, really. Love this conversation. It was amazing. So without further ado, Lee Kay. Lee Kay. How's it going? William Clark. <laughs> Mate, I didn't know your what your last name was, what your surname was. Krasinski. Did you look it up? Krasinski. Yeah, you got it. It's fucking amazing. Most people, yeah, most people are like Krasinski or... Yeah, you, but you got it. You got it. It's it, it's the Polish last name. Oh, is it mean? Polish? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Who who in your exactly. family is Polish? My dad's side is almost a hundred percent Polish. Oh, really? And then my mom's side is mostly German. So yeah, I've got I've got the two in the blood. So you're proper European. Kind of. I mean, they they've been here for quite some time, but. As far as origins go, yeah. Can you speak German or Polish? <clears throat> you know, I wish my parents learned because my grandpa on my mom's side spoke German, but he didn't like teach them uh, growing okay. up. And then same thing with my grandma on my dad's side. She would speak Polish in the household, but it like skipped a generation. Did like they, they never they never learned, so we didn't get yeah. to learn. I wish though. Did they grow yeah. up here? They did. Uh, okay. Yeah. From well, actually in Chicago. Okay. And then my parents, yeah, my parents moved out to Southern California, like late eighties and then bought a house and had me and my sister and we grew up here, but we spent like a lot of summers in the Midwest. So interesting. Yeah. Love Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Chicago's amazing. I've been debating about living there as well. I was looking at property there and it looks a little more expensive than Detroit. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Depending, it, it depends if you're in the suburbs or the city. Yeah. Suburbs is reasonable. I actually was looking at, like, right at the beginning of the pandemic, I was looking at some property in, like, suburbs of Chicago, mm. and it's definitely reasonable there. Yeah. My, my view behind the suburbs, though, of, like, a city, I don't know about you, but it's like, do I really want to live in the suburbs of a, of okay, a city so like is, Chicago? Yeah, this is interesting because I think, like, now that I'm older, I realize that people are kind of either like a city person yeah. or a suburbs person or rural. I'm definitely more like rural Same. slash suburbs. Okay. Like I spent five years in LA and it was great at the time. And like, there's things I love about LA, but now I'm in like semi-rural San Diego. And like, I've got like the neighbor's horses are in my yeah. backyard and like, there's like trails and I think I've just realized I'm more of a like peace and quiet kind of person. I yeah. I agree with that. I'm I'm more of a country boy than anything else. But if I'm wanting to live in the city, I want to live in the city. I think totally like get the full experience. Yeah, like I just I don't know. Chicago is an amazing city, and there's so much to offer. But I think it would annoy me living like. 30 minutes traffic in chicago is actually really annoying and i don't people don't talk about it because it's actually appalling um it's horrible yeah but the issue with living in the city in chicago is that you you live like it's going to take you a good hour to get to the, the airport pretty much every time yeah yep for sure we're versus like detroit you guys i mean there's some traffic but it's not even comparable and how like you're you're in the city right like you're not are you in the suburbs like, or the city i'm like 10 minutes from downtown it's not far. okay 10 15 minutes yeah. but i'm i'm in detroit itself um so you would leave maybe or would you keep your place there well i was actually looking at austin as well i was like genuinely like looking pretty austin was more so where i was looking um but I I'm, love Austin. Aust Austin's an amazing city. Um, apart from the heat, I can't deal with that heat. Holy fuck! Um, <laughs> but for me, it's just like property costs are just so high for like what mm -hmm. you're getting, and 
it's not adding enough value in my life for me to comprehend spending that much money to get something that I really want to live in. Um, don't get me wrong. I've like Detroit is like, you can't really compare Detroit to anywhere cause it's so cheap to live here. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can have a, a really nice place for practically nothing. Um, how are taxes in Michigan now? Super Cause low. I know like, I mean, Texas is pretty, good with taxes see like i don't know income taxes in ta- in texas are, are great because it's zero but property mm-hmm. taxes is like higher than anywhere in the country higher than california i'm pretty sure they are yeah wow so you're paying like two and a half percent of your property value in mm-hmm. um in texas or in in austin at least if you go like to outside of austin to like some smaller smaller like counties um and cities like it's much cheaper but then it's like well you're not living in the city so it's like so why no la for you like is it just kind of because it's it's just i used to live there i used to live there um okay like in 2015 i think i lived there um i'm i just don't think i don't know i think california i think i Personally, I think LA is a bit fucked. <laughs> I think we probably agree on that point. Yeah, I just, How long were you there for? Only were like, like four months, four or five months. Yeah. I did I, enough to get a a lay of the land. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I like going to LA. I, I spend a lot of time there with like Ryan, my manager. He's there. I've got a lot of like some of my closest friends live there, and obviously he plays shows there, and I love playing shows there, and. It's it's a it's a great city for me, but I don't know. There's something about staying in a city with that many people. Like it feels, yeah. There's no. You're, I feel like you're either built for that, like you like thrive off that kind of energy, or it feels suffocating. And it started to feel suffocating to me. Well, for you me, know? yeah, for me, like New York is my favorite city in practically in the world. Mm-hmm. and I would move to New York tomorrow. Like, hands down, I would live there again. I, I loved living there. It was an amazing experience. And every time I go, I'm like, this feels like home. Um, but you know how it is, like, touring around. When you're touring so often, and I still live in the UK as well, so I'm not ever actually here. That I'm not actually at home in America that often. So it's mm-hmm. like, why would I pay four and a half thousand dollars a month on rent for something that I'm there like two weeks of the month? It just seems pointless. And then also pay the taxes in that city as well. That's how I felt too. Like my lease was ending and I was like, I'm here maybe 50% of the yeah. time, if that. And, you know, I was kind of like, why am I, yeah. like, I'm not really sure this is serving me anymore. So, but it was, it was great while I was there. And there's, I mean, you know, there's like amazing restaurants and I, I have some really great friends up there mm-hmm. and love playing up there, but I think it's better as like a visitation type thing, like yeah. pop in and pop out and the traffic. I mean, like everyone already knows this, but it's so mind numbingly terrible. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> like, I think you probably spend just as much time in your car as you do like anywhere else. You know. Yeah, I like to be productive as well. And when everything takes you an hour, I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck this. I think I'd just be a hermit and just stay in my house all the time because it's just like not yeah. worth it. And you can't, yeah. there's not many areas. Like I'd sp- I usually stay in K-Town, which I really like because you can walk everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, I don't know. You're in San Diego, which is probably the, one of the most beautiful places in America. So I'm kind of jealous. I love it. And I think growing up, I didn't fully appreciate it. And then once I moved to LA and enjoyed that for a while and I came back like as an adult adult, I was like, oh, wow, I I feel really blessed that I was raised here. And like, yeah, it still can be expensive depending on where you live, Um, especially like downtown, of course, but that's the same with any city. But yeah, like our weather, you definitely can't beat Um, like our beaches. I think our beaches are better than a lot of places in California and mm. like when I lived in LA I think I went to the beach once honestly because I lived on the east side yeah <laughs> and so to get to the west side it's just like forget it it's such a mission so 
yeah, but I like it here. And I think like, I don't know if I'll stay here forever or maybe I'll do like part time, but for now it, it works and, and I really love it. So, yeah, I yeah. like San Diego a lot. I was literally on the way back from the gym this morning talking to a friend about he's thinking of moving there. And I'm like, so I feel like a lot of people are moving here right now. It's because it's, I, I think, although it is expensive, it's way more affordable as in what you get for your money than LA. And I'd like, mm -hmm. uh, I, that's more so like what you get as a city and as like a kind of environment. It's cleaner, it's nicer. Um, there's not as many home, there's not as big of a homeless issue as there is in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and everything's a bit more compact. Yeah. I like the homeless thing is so sad and crazy. And I remember going up there, I think like middle of last year for a gig, like my first gig back in LA since the pandemic and just being like, wow, this has changed even in a year and a half, yeah. like the amount of homelessness on the street and like it spreading to streets where it wasn't before. And just seeing that was, it's so shocking and so sad. And I don't, I don't know how we even begin to really like fix that, but it's uh yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's pretty mad. I was in San Francisco last, well, when this comes out, it would be two weekends ago. Holy fuck balls. That place is ridiculous. Yeah. Have you been? <laughs> It's been a few years since I've been up there, but I'm aware of the situation up there. Oh, for wow. Sure. It's special. Like, yeah. Ryan and I, we stayed in, the, like, near the Tenderloin, which was always notoriously quite bad anyway. Mm -hmm. It is like another country. It's it's literally like a third world country. Drug dealers on every corner. Yeah. Um, on a Friday night, drug dealers on every corner homeless people everywhere people freebasing in their cars like needles hanging it's so sad and you're just like you've got rich people you've got some of the wealthiest people living right there and then you've got because it, it, it feels a bit different to LA because I was in LA the day after and downtown LA it doesn't feel as crazy it doesn't it doesn't feel nowhere near as bad it feels like they've cleaned it up a little bit but the, I think the difference is, is in LA, it's more encampments of people just like, oh, just living in tents where San Francisco was literally just like, yeah, I don't, they, it, and, fuck, I don't know what it was. It's was wild. Yeah. And like, speaking of like property tax and things like that, you think about how many people are paying into taxes mm. up there that have so much money. Yeah. And it's like, well, where does all that money go? Totally. So like, I'm always looking at the people at the top, like running things and making these decisions being like, I think there's just a massive lack of accountability in politics in general. But like seeing that in person, I think just kind of solidifies that. Cause I'm like, I mean, even LA, I'm like, there's so many wealthy people that live there and yeah. celebrity and, and successful businesses and everything else. Like, where do all these taxes go? Yeah. Like, I always think like, I would love for like that chain of events to be completely transparent, like to be able to see like where all of our money as citizens actually goes. <laughs> Could you imagine? It'll never happen. <laughs> It'll never happen. But like, like that's the thing, like we pay, like we literally pay these people to be public servants, but it's, it's not like, they don't act like public servants. No. You know what I mean? It's very, it's very, yeah, it's very interesting system, which mm -hmm. it has actually worked for many years. But now it, I think it worked for a short amount of time and then it just got worse and worse and worse. But instead of fixing the problem, it just got uh, like a Band-Aid put over it and it was never actually fixed. The issue wasn't ever fixed. And then it just yep. piled up and now it's just a shit show. Um, yeah. How was your meditation? <laughs> it was good. Thank you. I needed to like, I'm trying to do it every morning. Um, I really just feel like it is so grounding and kind of like gives me clarity to yeah. start my day. And I'm on the tail end of a self-imposed 70 day challenge where it's daily meditation, daily movement and no alcohol. So I think I have like a week left and it's been really nice. And I actually think like the meditation has made the most difference. Yeah. 
because I'm not a big drinker anyway, but I'm like, I don't think I've ever gone that long, like in my adult life without yeah. drinking. Like, I know I don't need it. So it's been a, it's been a nice little reset. What was the uh, reasoning behind starting it? I saw someone else do something similar and I was like, that's interesting. I've never done something quite like that. And I've always meditated and like, I'm big on like getting outside, moving my body, exercising, but to actually have like a period of time where you're making sure that you're like hitting all those things yeah. every day. I kind of just wanted to see like how good I could feel. Yeah. Um, I'm like big on optimization and just like feeling like your best self. So I was like, let's, let's do this. It co- kind of coincided with the new year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It went by really fast, which is surprising, but it's do, been good. Do you think it helps in like other parts of your life? Or do you just think generally overall it feels better? But have you like noticed a difference in like other parts of your life where you're like, yeah, this is, this is good. Everything. Honestly, I feel like it affects everything. Like it helps with clarity. Um, I think like not hopping on my phone first thing and like setting aside those 20 minutes to meditate. um, Like it, it really goes with you everywhere throughout your day and I think like just it also makes you more present in your relationships and make better decisions and yeah I don't know I think just be like more tapped into like yourself yeah I've always wanted to try the whole meditation thing but just haven't (laughs) realistically I'm like I think go on I think it can be like really intimidating because it's kind of this buzzword and it feels like there's like so much pressure with it yeah. but what I've found is like doing guided meditations is really great or at mm-hmm. least a great place to start because then you're not just trying to sit there and like clear your head there's something kind of for your brain to like follow along with um and I do them at night too to go to sleep and they knock me out which I remember hearing about that like oh there's these like meditations of people like telling stories mm. and they're supposed to put you to sleep because it kind of lets your brain focus on something without thinking about everything yeah. the next day or whatever. And then I, I tried it and they actually worked and I was blown away. So I've been doing them for like two years now. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I when I go to bed, I put Netflix on because <laughs> it. I know this sounds awful, but so I, many people fall asleep to TV though. It's so funny. I See, I... I I don't fall asleep to it unless I'm really fucking tired. Like last mm. night, yesterday, I didn't sleep at all the night before because I had a show and then had to fly. So just didn't sleep at all. And last night I like fell asleep to Netflix just like because I forgot. But usually I like watch something that I know will just take my mind off of everything else. Of the Because like my, I don't know about you, but my mind races so much. It's just like nonstop all the time. And it's like, what's it rather than like being in the present, it's very much like, what's next? What do I have to do next? Like, and like, even on phone calls, I can be like, I can just be not present because of my mind is just going elsewhere. And when I go to bed, I'm like, it's the worst time for me to like, to be non present because I'm literally like, thinking the minute I get in bed I'm like oh shit what have I got to do tomorrow oh I should be doing this I should be doing that blah 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 so Netflix just like or whatever show it just helps me just like forget about everything Mm -hmm. yeah it's I mean being present is so hard and I think it's like the modern like struggle for humanity is like being present and what I've like what I kind of always try to tell myself because I of course also struggle with that and it's like both ruminating on the past like what I could have done differently things that happened whatever and then yeah like stressing about the future and what I've realized is like we make our best decisions like from right here like being in the present moment and it's hard to remember that but I think like the more you kind of tell yourself that and like bring yourself back into that space it becomes a little bit easier year um but I think everyone struggles with that honestly it's so hard and there's so many distractions you know like if you don't set up those systems and like set up your environment to where like you can be more present then you're going to constantly be pulled in a hundred different directions yeah I I'd always love to like there's all these people that are just not all these people but there's a lot of people that just like are so 
insular, I guess is the, if that's the right word, but so like just present and just take each day as it goes and they probably don't get much shit done, <laughs> but <laughs> they're so at peace with themselves in the day. Um, it does sound pretty I'd like, Yeah. I'd like to think there's like a good balance there though. Like I think you can be productive and present and go with the flow, but I think that's like a sweet spot that's unique to each individual. And like, you kind of have to figure out like where that is for you. Cause like being so future oriented all the time, like it starts to feel like a rat race, oh, 100%. you know? And like, I, I don't, I think we're not here to like, feel like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's easier said than done. Do you get that with music? Feeling like a rat race? Yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's something that like, I was actually feeling really strongly right before the pandemic mm. so in a way I almost feel like the pandemic was a blessing in disguise for me um because it kind of gave me this window of opportunity to like step back and like reassess my relationship with music yeah. and zero in on like what exactly I want to do because I think and I, I know you can relate um there's so much that goes on outside of just like having fun and making music and like playing shows like yeah. there's so much behind the scenes and like the business side of it and the social media and like the forward facing side of it can feel like such a rat race. And I, I started to kind of resent DJing and music because of that, like a few years ago. And it was, it was a shitty feeling, you know, like you don't want to feel like that about something that you actually really love. So I think in a way, the last few years has been a nice opportunity for me to kind of reframe my relationship with music. Um, Yeah. Yeah, what about you? Yeah, for me, like, do I? Yeah, it, I'm 100%. What's next? That type of person. Like, say, for instance, we did the LA show the other day um, and we sold out before, like, before it opened, which was great. And, like, at dinner, we were having dinner with Carlos that runs Factory 93. And we were like, okay, so what's next? And it's like, <laughs> rather than going, let's go and have the fucking best night of our lives and enjoy it. It's like, what we, what, what should we do next? And like, do you feel? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go for it. Do you feel like that takes away from like the joy of it for you though, or do you think it is like part of the joy of it? I think to be fair, I like the rat race, which is a bit weird. That's good then. Yeah. I like yeah. the like <clears throat> I think there's there's a difference between the what's next or and the pressure that that I put on myself. So like there's certain situations where like uh I, Ryan and I like say for instance my my last single searching um on paper it's done pretty well but it's not done as well at this moment in time for what we want it to be doing. And I know there's gonna there would be a lot of people that would be like it's doing really well and be like I wish my records did that but we kind of put so much pressure on this record that we actually had to like we had a conversation with with ourselves about it and we're like guy we're like we need to fucking chill out because th- life is good if you know what I mean mm. just because it's not done what we wanted it to do and not because like it didn't do this many streams on day one or it didn't do this high on beatport or it didn't get this much radio play like it's a fuck like and this was the conversation we had i was like it's a fucking good record or i believe it's a fucking good record and i'm really proud of this record so realistically whatever it does it doesn't matter and the fact that it's not created an overnight success then that's fine and that's Mm -hmm. maybe not the journey that the track's chosen for us um because we put so much pressure on on it i i always put a lot of pressure on releasing records um just generally in in myself but this that last record was like that was it was insane because i think it was because it was such a big lead up we had like four months lead up time and like we'd literally done everything and it was just like so much pressure and 
it got to the point where I was like, well, this isn't actually enjoyable releasing music and releasing music, making music, releasing music and DJing are the, the three reasons why I do what we do. Um, and when it comes to a point when you're not enjoying it, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like the hard part about pursuing a career in any like creative field yeah. is finding that balance between like still enjoying the creative process and like genuinely liking and believing in what you're creating. Yeah. But then like, you're also seeking that like external validation because yeah. in a lot of ways, your career depends on it. Yeah. You know, and it can be easy to kind of like get pulled to one side or the other, but they're both, you know, a part of the equation. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think also the tough thing um, that I've had to deal with, which I'm not too sure if you have, but it's the comparison of other people or your peers. Do you ever struggle with that? Of course. Yeah. I think anyone who says that they don't is probably lying. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> but I think like most people do. And I think like this is something that I think a lot about too. Like we're we're constantly inundated with what everybody else is doing because of the internet yeah. and because of social media. So I think about this a lot too in relation to the guys and girls that have been around for like decades that when they were starting their music careers, there wasn't the yeah. internet or there wasn't, you know, Instagram. And I wonder if they still would have like gone on their path if they had been mm. exposed to all of that. Cause I think it's can be so distracting. And I think it also like begs the question, like what is really us and what is really like external influence, yeah. you know, cause it's almost like inevitable that you're going to absorb some of that, even if it's subconscious, mm. you know? So I think, yeah, I think being able to put your blinders on and really go inward it's it's so hard but i think it's so important to feel genuinely and authentically connected to what you're doing yeah but it's hard yeah it's tough isn't it because <laughs> it the whole business that is the business side of it right is by seeing what everyone else is doing because we they're our friends there's a lot of us a lot of people that we follow that are our friends that are doing the same thing as us and obviously i don't know if, I'm pretty sure you're the same as me, but I want all my friends to do well and I want all my friends to be successful, but I also want to be successful myself. <laughs> and it's that kind of like battle where I wouldn't say it's jealousy now. now I used to, I used to get very jealous of people um, when I was like younger, but now it's more so like, how the fuck do we get to that level? Yeah. And I think that's when it comes down to like, is something inspiring or is it like bringing up feelings of envy or jealousy or regret or whatever? And I think if you can reframe things to where like it is a point of inspiration versus like bringing out like negative feelings, I think that's good. Um, but also like, honestly, sometimes you just have to like mute things and you have to like, like, yeah, of course we want to be supportive of friends, but like, let's be real. Like not everyone we follow is a genuine isn't necessarily someone we have like genuine like close relationships with so I don't necessarily think like we need to be super tuned into what everyone else is doing and I think that can be very distracting yeah I think that's a really important issue or not issue um statement because I don't know I want to get your thoughts and feelings on this I had I had, <laughs> I had an idea of just unfollowing everyone on social media and mm -hmm. I spoke through it with like I spoke through it with a couple of mates and one of them was like, don't fucking do that. You look like a dickhead. And then the other person was like, D do it. <clears throat> and then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it will, if it would actually impact my career or not. Well, I guess like, what's like, what's your intention? You know, is it to kind of like focus and, you know, not spend so much time scrolling or being inundated with other people's content. Cause in my opinion, like, I don't think you need to justify that to anyone. And at the end of the day, it's your life and your career. And if doing that, like, you're not doing that as a fuck you, you're doing that as like a, I need to focus and like, not, you know, be on this platform and be constantly seeing everyone else's images 24 seven. Yeah. I think that's, but, the, that's the thing for me is that like, I, I don't actually worry about like seeing other people's 
image like pictures and videos it doesn't actually ever affect me but i'm just like why am i why am i fucking just scrolling like mm-hmm. i i even have like a 30 minute timer on my instagram every day and i 100 percent guarantee go over that like it's such a waste of time yeah. and i it's it's is so addictive which is what i think makes it so frustrating because yeah. it's like how as grown adults can we still be <laughs> so sucked into this thing like it's crazy and it makes me think about like because I think we're about the same age being in like middle school and getting my first phone and it was like a brick phone like just like a crappy like t9 brick phone and I'm like little did we know that you know fast forward a couple decades we would be just completely sucked into these things you know but yeah the screen time thing is crazy and I I think too like how much of our own potential are we taking away by letting these things because like 30 minutes like that's probably a nice healthy you know yeah. daily time period to do that but like anything beyond that like it's nothing productive no you it's, know it's really not and there's like i can just be sat there and then all of a sudden i've got it's like it's almost just that kind of automatic thing to just grab your phone rather than like just sit and enjoy the moment it goes back to being in the moment because realistically when you're looking at your phone or when i'm looking at my phone i'm not actually in the moment i'm like kind of somewhere else exactly yeah i think too going forward like the hottest and rarest commodity is going to be focus yeah I look at the generations coming in and our generation, I'm like, there's so many distractions and anyone that can turn off those distractions and focus Mm. on whatever their goals might be are going to win. Yeah. You know, because so many people are not, and they're just sucked in, you Mm. know, like, and it's not, not many productive things happen in that space. No, I totally agree with you. And I think there's that also that the way media is given to us now it's very short and it's very like you don't actually have to work for it it's just there um that's why i love what's co- what what the kind of the the movie theaters are doing at the moment like all these films are becoming a lot longer like i've just seen the new batman film is coming out soon and it's like nearly three hours long wow and there's something that i love about that because although you're being engrossed and you're being entertained for three hours you're investing wholly your whole time and stuff if you're in the cinema i hope you you don't check your phone i hope you don't do all of, you don't talk to people and things like that and you're literally just focusing on one thing we don't do that much nowadays no and the irony is it feels so good to do that. It feels amazing. Like very rarely do you regret doing things like that. Same thing with being present with like being with friends or family or at a dinner, like not having phones out, like there's a palpable difference, you know? And I think that's becoming more and more rare, but when you do do it, like it it feels good. Like it feels natural. Mm. Yeah. There's, it is nice that. I like my parents even growing up we we always had a rule like no phones at the dinner table um just because it's it, it's so nice to just be not have any distractions yeah there was a study that came out a while back that said even just having your phone on the table yeah is distracting to people mm-hmm. like just seeing it out of your peripheral vision is a distraction yeah, you know and affects amazing. how we act it's it's kind of astounding if you use do you do you have you have iPhone, an iphone don't you mm, i do you, do you use the uh do not disturb button now i so i put on um airplane mode at night okay um and because i hate like i like picking up your phone the next day when you finally do seeing that like barrage of messages <laughs> just like f- makes me flip out so i keep it on airplane mode for a while and then i also use an app called freedom okay. and it's it comes out to be super super cheap per day like pennies per day if you buy like the annual subscription but it links to both um your macbook and like your phone yeah 
and you can set it to however long you want and you can set like which apps or which websites you want to block, which I, I find that super helpful. Freedom. I'm going to check mm-hmm. that out. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it's it's been good. Um, Cause like with willpower, it's it's really easy to tell yourself to do something or to yeah. not check something, but let's be real, like we're animals and we like instant gratification. Totally. So it's easier said than done. Yeah. Totally. Do you um <clears throat> obviously it's like the beginning of the year. Do you are you the type of person to like set goals for the each year? Um, I think when I was younger, I would kind of try to do the resolutions thing now. And I learned this actually from Tim Ferriss. He does a review of the last year and makes note of everything that he really enjoyed and wants to do more of. And then everything that was kind of a bummer or he wants to do less of. So I actually did that um, for last year. And it's kind of nice, too, because I think like there's if you don't schedule things like they're probably not going to happen. And so things like setting aside time to like do any kind of like travel or like spending time with certain people or Mm. any like activities that you want to do just getting those on the calendar is kind of nice so I'm trying to do more of that Mm. um like restaurants that you want to eat at stuff like that yeah yeah what about you that resolution I don't set resolutions I don't agree with resolutions um because my view is like just change it now if you've got an issue with something like change it now and just stop doing it or stop like if you're thinking about stopping doing it well you realize that it's an issue so just stop it now and it will kind of change things up um my, does that work for you yeah i'm i'm pretty i can stop things like i don't know if like soda this is the most stupid thing but like two years ago Maybe nearly, yeah, two and a half years ago. I just do this stupid, I do these stupid things just to test myself. And it's not necessarily stupid, but like I gave up chocolate for six months just because, like no reason, but because I was like, let's just see if, let's just do it, fuck it. And then I'm the same with soda. I haven't drank soda for like two and a half years. And so I I can stop things like that if I'm like... Okay, let's do it. Were you a big like soda drinker before? Um, once occasionally, a day. yeah, once a day maybe. Um, but it was like getting in the way of my training, and it was just like, what? what it's just wasted, wasted calories for me. Um, but I'm like at the point where I'm kind of craving it, so I'm probably gonna go back to it for a bit and then stop it again. Um. <laughs> I like very rarely drink soda, maybe never, like since I was a teenager, but I went to see Tool the other night and at the Honda center and they had RC Cola and I was like, Oh, like I gotta, what's RC Cola. It's like kind of like old school Pepsi. Like I want to say, I'm probably going to get this wrong. I think it's like came out in the nineties or something like that. It's kind of like a throwback type Cola Pepsi thing. Um, but anyway, that was like the first soda that I had in years and it was, was it was amazing? Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I like the bub- the bubbles. It was, yeah. it was good for a soda. You know, I don't like super sweet stuff like that, but yeah. Special occasion. Kind of craving a root beer right now, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Such a weirdo. But yeah, no, like for me, I set goals for that year. Um, mostly career goals um where and pretty much we i achieve they're achievable and and we achieve them what are you are you willing to share your goals for this year um maybe broadly speaking yeah broadly there's like a financial goal um there's different territories where i want to play in um there's types of music that I want to release um that's pretty much it broadly um and then there's like a few life goals as well that I kind of set that are more like long-term things 
um, like where I want to be living in like five years time and kind of like personal things I want to do at some point. Um, which funny enough, they're the ones that never actually happen. <laughs> the personal. What goal. do you mean? Why? Um, you're so, cause you're so focused yeah, on. Yeah, I think so. Career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like for the, it's stupidly, like for the last like three years, I've been like, I really want to go skiing. And obviously COVID's fucked us, but like I could have gone skiing this year and I just haven't. Right. You still can, depending where you, where I, you go. I still can. See, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. And of course it's hard when you're traveling, but if you don't get it on the books, like there's a very good chance it won't happen. And like, I think life goes by really quickly, you know? So yeah. scheduling things that you want to do or that you enjoy, I do think is like so important. I think, I, I don't know about you, but I think it's the acceptance that life's going to be okay if you don't do something. Like if I don't do a podcast, like this week or for the next month it's still it's like people are going to survive like it's Mm -hmm. not or like if i don't go in the studio it's i can still write music it's okay like that's the thing that i struggle with the most is that like i feel bad if i don't do something um where do you think that comes from like where do you get these like i feel like you're very and i'm a bit similar in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. like kind of like perfectionist and you have like really high expectations of yourself um i don't know i think probably probably childhood i guess like my parents like i've seen my parents work their fucking ass off to get to where they are today from like very young to like having nothing and then growing up and to, to, for them to kind of have a, an amazing lifestyle and none of that was like that that was just purely through hard work and grit really and I think that's for me the where it comes from. Um, but I think I don't know. I was always like very competitive as a kid. Like I was sport was like one of my biggest things, and like I wouldn't just do things in half measures. It would be like everything I try and do. It's like I have to do this to the best of my ability, and if it's below par, I'm gonna be pissed. Or, or people won't see it because it's I'm just not mm-hmm. going to do it. Um, which I think is actually probably not the best way to be. Because I think you've got to fail at things and you've got to learn from things. Um, yeah, it's weird. What about you? Well, and to that point too, though, like I think that's probably why you are successful in a lot of ways is because you are like that. And I think in order to like achieve a certain level of... Mm career success or whatever you kind of have to be singularly focused um and have those kinds of high expectations for yourself but that also has like a you know point of diminishing return right where it ends up going against you so to speak um I'm I think I'm trying to like find where that balance is my my problem is I get into the perfectionist procrastination loop where like you have such high expectations of yourself and then you either like don't start Mm. or you don't finish. That's so debilitating. mm, It's so bad. I didn't even know that that was a thing until like a few years ago. And I was like, that describes me to a T. Um, So it's something that I'm working on. And I've, I've realized that I'd rather like launch fast and adjust and learn along the way and get that experience versus just, you know, either being scared or in that place of fear and not starting or not finishing, you know? Yeah. And we're our own worst critics. Oh, 100%. 100%. How, how is that affected you in music or in your career? (laughs) Where do I begin? Um, I think with like production, like I think there's certain people who have, like they can go in the studio and write an EP in like two weeks and be done with it. Like, I feel like you're pro- <laughs> like, you're, you're probably pretty quick. Like I get that vibe from yeah. you. I wish I was like that, but I'm not like, if I don't finish a track in like a few sittings and it just sits mm. and then I kind of like move on to the next thing. Um, so I think like, as far as like number of releases, I think that that it's affected me in that way. Yeah. Um, just kind of being in that perfectionist, 
mindset. Um, and the irony is like, the more you make music, the better you get, you right. know, like you kind of have to like go through that process and just push on it and whatever, but I'm learning and I'm getting better about it too. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. There's a few things, but yeah, working on it. Yeah. That whole releasing music is, <clears throat> or like making music. And I think when there comes a point where you don't really make music for a while and then you, you're like going back in, you're like questioning yourself. That's, that's the thing I struggle with. This is the longest time I've, and I've said this so many times on this podcast because the podcast has been going for like nearly two years. And during the last, the, during COVID, I wrote so much music, like to the point where I think it like kind of burnt it, burnt me out of writing music and then I really haven't written that much music since and it really does my head in but it's also like I make excuses not to write music like I make other things that I have to do or mm -hmm. you, I just see myself faffing about my house like procrastinating fucking music making when I actually love making music but I I build this thing in my head where I'm like where it makes making music a chore, which is weird because I love making music and that feeling of there's no, for me, there's no better feeling of making a record and love and finishing it. And it's amazing. Like I literally cried the other day in the studio because I like was listening to record and I was like, I love this record so much. It makes me happy that mm -hmm. I want to cry. Um, that feeling. But for some reason I like recent oh, it's only in the last year I've just been like I guess it's just fucking lazy <laughs> in like I mean making it. yeah you're also not a robot you know like I think that you're naturally gonna have certain periods where you feel super like plugged in to yeah. that process and then like you might have some periods where you're not and mm. I think that it's good to kind of normalize that too you know you're not a machine yeah. Um, that being said, I think that's kind of the one of the challenges of doing something creative professionally yeah. is there is kind of always that pressure of like, What's next? I should be working on this. Yeah. I should be finishing this. Like, you know, this is, I need to get out X EPs a year. I need to write, you know, an album or whatever it might be. Yeah. And really like, yeah, of course there's some truth to that, but some of it's a little arbitrary, mm. you know? And I think it also goes back to like, it shouldn't really be about like number of releases, but like quality of releases and like totally. the, the purpose behind each one, Yeah, you know, because there's people that release, I mean, God, there's some people that I, I get their music and they make great music, but they're making like, they're releasing tracks like every week or yeah. something. And I'm like, Oh, at that point, like you're just a, you're like a factory. Literally. And, I, and I, how much soul is like really behind these things. Yeah. And I, I, I think there's times when that's okay. I think it's okay to do that sometimes. Um, but I think there comes a point when that time actually has to end and you have to like really put thought behind what you're putting out. Um, and just like, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Because I think that's the issue with the music business is the business side of it. Um, Cause it actually stops a lot of creativity you hear that and you get that all the time with like bands right i've just listened mm -hmm. to the, um the dave grohl book which is really fucking amazing um but like this it was something that he would he said it was like you have your first album that is made by a bunch of people in a room that have zero money have zero expectation apart from they want to take over the world with their band they don't know what goes in on that they don't know how much work that takes or what that what you need to get to that level but that's their only ambition the only expectation is to make the best music to take over the world which is like kind of like a a dream i feel like every musician has at some point in their life to be the best in the world at what they do um and they make this amazing album. And then after that album's made and after the success has happened, they try and 
recreate that and you can't you can't recreate that because you you're in a very different situation you're in multi-million pound or dollar studios you've got a and r's looking over you you've got like it just changes and i think that's the, the beauty and the worst part of this industry is that it it gets to a point where your actual what you're actually known for is being taken away because of finances i think like one i love reading music autobiographies for that reason like getting insight into people's like full timeline i think especially if you're also like a musician or creative like it's really nice to like see the full history and get the behind the scenes story and the the challenging times and everything like that i just finished reading jules autobiography and it was amazing but she also dives into that like the making of each album and she would kind of like go between genres like do like kind of a pop album and then go to country and like trying to be received well by each market you know and like stuff like that but to your point I think like the more that I do this the more I think being happy making music and like pursuing this comes down to staying a little naive Mm. in that sense like almost like you're writing your first album every single time yeah you know where like you're not putting all of these expectations on yourself of like oh I need it to do this or I need to like reach this market or release on this label or something like that but like really kind of going back to that place of where where you first started and like actually enjoying what you're doing yeah you know Instead of it being a means to an end or something like that. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. It's that that's the important place, right? And I think that's where it's the most fun because I because I think when you start making stuff for the sake of it, or just to please the heads of everyone above you or labels or things like that, um, it's just not enjoyable. I think that's that's maybe one of the issues nowadays more so than what it used to be, is that everyone needs a platform now um and to get on a platform you need to sign to a label which means that you need to make your sound that label sound because there's not many labels that are actually releasing music that is all over the shop and kind of just releasing good music um yeah you have to make your sound sound like what they put out and i think that's what really i was really excited after covid um i thought there'd be a shit ton of amazing music to be released and it was completely the opposite it was a shit ton of carbon copies really yeah shit ton of carbon carbon copies of people just going i need to i need to be successful in this industry so what do i need to be to, to be successful what do i need to make to be successful and it's like just a bunch of carbon copies is this a poke at it like a certain genre that. No, no, not at all. This it's not like I think it's the same in pretty much everything. I was talking to my roommate um last night. He's his he's it goes under the artist Oon, which I, you might know him actually as techno. He's like really the hard techno. Mm. Um and he was saying the same. He was like he plays live all the time, so everything he he releases everything he plays is his own music. But he was asked to do a mix for somebody and when he does mixes he was like he goes and finds music and does like a dj mix he's like i've just like struggled to find music that's like really wow and i'm not saying that it's not out there but what i'm saying is it's extremely hard to find over the mass amount of formulaic dance music yeah yeah i think like that's kind of where being like a selector kind of comes in is like having the places that you do look for music and kind of having the artists and labels that you do follow on Beatport or SoundCloud or wherever it might be, be like really refined to your taste, but that that can be hard to do. Like that's a process in and of itself. And it's kind of like, will always be evolving as well. But yeah, that's, I think it's, you know, like it's kind of hard too, especially when certain sounds get really trendy, like obviously techno's having a moment right now. Yeah. And then over the last, you know, two, one to two years now, everything is getting faster and faster, which like I 
uh, just personally, like I enjoy that music. Like yeah. sometimes I'll play fast, like depending on the gig, but it almost becomes like, I start to feel like these things kind of become like a character yeah. caricature of themselves Apparently. where now like labels and artists that I was following because they were making like really groovy kind of fun, interesting, you know, 120 BPM ish techno. Now, like everybody's releasing 135, 140, yeah. 145. And I'm like, okay, I guess I need to kind of like frame and like find yeah. some, you know, it's just like a continuous process, which is fine. But I think, you know, you also wonder like how much of that is like genuine and then how much of it is kind of just like this bubble that's going to pop at some point. Yeah. I went to, um, <clears throat> I went to, I'm not going to say the name, but I went to a pretty big techno party, um, a few months ago. Was it in LA? Okay. okay. No, it wasn't in LA. Um, and I was just amazed on how every artist sounded the same. And I'm like, and these was like literally some of the biggest artists in the world. And I'm like, why do you all sound the same? Like there, there, there should be no reason. Like we're all individual artists. It's like you go to a rock concert, no one sounds the same. They're all singing their own individual songs. They're all doing their own individual thing. And don't get me wrong, house, techno, what electronic music, there's obviously a monotonous kind of, vibe about it which it's supposed to be um but, but it's palpable it, like we all hear what's going on exactly yeah. and you're just like why like you have you're in front of an audience that realistically are there for you to do you so this is every gives you every opportunity to do what you want to do what the fuck you want to do like and it might not always work but at least like push it at least try and mm -hmm that's the thing that i i don't struggle with because i make sure that i do that i make sure that i don't play what anyone else is playing which it kind of adds a it, it, it's definitely a benefit but i'm just like why doesn't everyone else do that but oh i know this is like such a complex and hot topic too and i feel like it can be a bit controversial so i i get I understand like some of that kind of naturally getting worked in to people's sounds and like maybe a lot of them really genuinely do like playing fast and making fast and hard music, whatever. Now it's like gotten into like the trance territory, whatever. And that's fine. But like, I think it makes me respect and not that I don't respect any of those people, but like, like Recondite, for example, I saw him, like, so I've always good. liked his music. And then I saw him play live at, last summer in San Diego at day moves and um, was like in the center of the crowd, like for his whole set, just like so good. And he plays like he was in one of the headlining slots and he was kind of surrounded by people that were playing like faster on either side of yeah. him. And he just went up and did his thing. And he does like, I don't know, he like maybe 120 at yeah. times, you know, like it's, it's nice and slow, but it's moody. And like his production is just so quality. And I'm like, this is, he has stayed true to his sound from the beginning. And I, I love that. And I respect that so much. Cause I think it probably is really hard when your sound's not necessarily the hottest trend of the moment to, to really kind of stick to your guns and keep yeah. doing and making what you want to do. I think it's, I think it goes back to that business side of it, doesn't it? It's very hard to get booked. It's very hard to do this if you don't fit with certain lineups. But I think that comes down to promoters actually like growing a pair of balls and just being like, fucking let's just book them. And well, agreed. And I think that it's kind of like this triangle between fans yeah. and what fans want and what they're willing to pay for. And then it's promoters and bookers, right? They're part of it. And then it's also kind of like agents and managers yeah. a little bit on like who they're willing to like push, push and, and give opportunities to or link up opportunities. Um, I think like being genuine though, like being a genuine artist also means like maybe your sound's not going to be hot. Yeah. You're like all the time. 100%. And like, maybe you're going to have some slow years and like, mm. if you're okay with that and like things generally come back around anyway, like that's, it's a strong position to take, but I think that's like true artistry, you know? I totally agree with that. I've, that's what we do it for. Right. It's just, we don't be become artists to be successful financially 
we like how many years do we do it and still do it and earn practically nothing compared to what mm. you could if you lit, worked in a corporation or whatever like we've all got friends that are like one of my best friends is a lawyer and in like one of the biggest law firms in the world in london and earns an absolute fortune but he can't stand his life <laughs> and it's like i didn't start doing music and i'm sure you didn't start doing music to be, to become rich it's just that's kind of like a pipe dream right at the end of it is that like maybe you might get rich one day but realistically as long as we can enjoy what we're doing that's all that matters and i think that's what i f it feels like it's going a little bit further away from that where it's more about how many tickets you can sell how much money you can make how much money the promoters can make and things like that. and this is why i love the guys at crossed if i'm honest like in san diego because they just they've got such a great relationship with their fan base or with the people that actually go that really believe in the festival it's it's never about the lineup um from an outsider i from mm -hmm. from what i view is like they the the lineup is secondary compared to the 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 kind of fan base that go but because the fan base trusts them so much as promoters it really means that the lineup can be as good as possible and one of the best lineups in america um because it's like they're pushing music um movement does does the same it's not about the headliners it's about really pushing great fucking music and don't get me wrong you're always going to get a headliner but that's not really pushing the sales it's the sales are pushed beforehand um which i think is really important yeah and i mean i mean like booking lineups uh like what a complex process too and i think like it is all about balance too like you want to have some of the kind of like crowd pleasers yeah. and like the kind of you know, top line names that are going to maybe carry some of it, but then like working in the new up yeah. and coming talent and like working in different textures and sounds and stuff like that. I think that's definitely what makes a good festival and taking chances on, you know, new names and, and things like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, is movement happening this year? Did they? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Have you been? I have, I went, Oh God. Oh, let's see. 2020 29 i think 2019 and 2018 i went mm. and played some after parties and then was supposed to um do an after party with pan pot on in 2020 and yeah. that got tanked fucking COVID. sad yeah i did a stream for them though i love those guys the packs of how guys nice. they're just they're the best yeah they're amazing yeah. They, they get it they totally get it um which is few and far behind but between people getting it nowadays mm. um, yeah and i feel like they like genuinely want to support artists which is always a good a good feeling you know when the promoter turns up to your show that's you, you know they're in it for the right thing there's so, there's something f for me anyway when promoters don't turn up to the show really i know right really gets so it's a completely different experience yeah it's when people are very hands-on with their parties it just makes it feel so much more like welcoming and yeah. and authentic yeah it, it's something very weird to me it's like this is not this is this is when it turns into a business get like picked up by the driver at the airport barely speak get dropped at your hotel get yeah. picked up again get dropped off at the venue and they're like okay go yeah. go ahead go play yeah it's weird yeah. it's really weird and like i don't know but maybe that's because just because we're in it for different things right like we're in it because we love doing what we're doing and sometimes some promoters are just in it just to make money um, yeah which i get it's a business at the end of the day we can't argue with that um talking to shows you're coming on tour with me Woohoo! yes i know we had to reschedule some dates but i'm super excited yeah, yeah when when they're like we're when are they now uh toronto is supposed to happen on february 19th do you think that's gonna Supposedly, happen toronto is like shut down right now I so say, i haven't even bought my flight yet because i'm like don't buy I'm just it gonna, 
I'm just going to wait for now. Um, and then Columbus and I always forget. Oh, Grand Rapids. Have you but those are March, April. Have you seen that Columbus club? Is it, wait, is it the other world, right? Yeah. I'm so excited. No, I've seen pictures. And then some people were messaging me being like, have you seen this place? I know. I looked it up. It's insane. It's insane. It's like, like I want to I want to go hang out there. Yeah, we should. We should get in early and go. Um, Let's do it. Because it kind of, I've not been there, but it looks insane. And it's kind of reminds me of Meow Wolf. Have you been to a Meow Wolf? I have not been, but I'm familiar. To. You have to And go. I wish more... Like we need more places like that. It's it looks like the perfect place to have a party, basically. Yeah, it's just like an immersive art gallery. That did you guys like seek out that venue, or was that just what the promoter? Books? I had never heard of it. Never heard of it in my life. And then my agents were like, "Other world wants to do a party with you." And we're like, "What's other world?" And then I looked it up and was like, "Sick, let's do it." Because let's be honest, Columbus isn't known for house music right um but yeah i'm all for shit like that it's like meow wolf in santa fe like santa who would have thought you could throw a party in santa fe and like 500 mm -hmm. people turn up um yeah it's amazing but San santa fe is also like a very like artsy creative yeah community but agree about the like electronic music yeah. part of it you're kind of like oh interesting yeah it's weird but yeah I, I think that would be cool we need some we need some more venues in in america that are like just generally better venues i'm surprised la doesn't have something like that you know or more of the major cities but mm. i almost feel like when cities are smaller it almost encourages yeah. more innovation because there's not so much competition yeah Totally. You know? Detroit needs a good, good, good club. I played at Leland, Leland. City Club. Oh my God. I'm surprised you were alive. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. They told me, they told me like when they picked me up from the airport, they're like, yeah. So like a few weeks ago it was raining and like part of the roof like fell in over the old DJ booth. And I was like, sweet. So um, I'm going to die tonight then or what? Like, I'm not really sure what you're saying. <laughs> it's it's cool though. I, like, I want to go back when there's a goth night because that's like so my people. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting venue. Um, there's definitely character to it. But there just, is character. just fix the fucking roof. You know, I don't know like what the safety regulations are for that block. We're in Detroit. There's no safety regulations. I Come know. On. <laughs> I know. <But> I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I guess it adds like an element of, uh, you know, surprise. <laughs> if you go, it's just always a dice roll. But yeah, I'm not willing cool. to take that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wild. Um, what have you got coming up on the label? What are your plans? Um, so let's see. In general, coming up, I am well with the label, I'm gonna be releasing an EP myself. That'll cool. be next, but that probably will be in April. Um what's a label called for people that don't know about what you what your label is? It's called Circulate. Um I love that name. And yeah. And okay, we got to get this label engine thing figured out, though, because I think you have to go back. You're going to have to go back and find that invitation. I can't resend it to you. Oh, what? If you want, if you want the promos. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you haven't sent me anything, motherfucker. <laughs> um, labor, so it's on label engine. Yeah, okay. it's it's okay. I'll send you, I'll like text you about it. But um, yeah, and then just had a release from an Italian duo called Amethysts, cool. and they released the first album that we've done on the label, and it was really great. Lots of good feedback. Um, they're super talented. I think they're just going to keep getting bigger. And let's see, myself, I have a stream coming out next week. I don't. When is this released? This comes out next week. Comes out Tuesday. 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 Okay. Uh, so this Friday, then um, I'm doing a stream with Obscure Music, oh, cool. and then um, what do you what like else. doing streams? Mm, I think it depends. Yeah. On on what it's for, I and I do jump on Twitch once in a while, and like I've we have like a nice little community over there, and so I do like connecting with 
them. Um, I probably don't do that as regularly as I should, but at the same time, like now that the pandemic is over, I feel like I'm not at home as much. So yeah. it can be a challenge, but did you jump on the Twitch thing at all when you were? No, no yeah. I, I didn't do a single live stream during COVID. Ah, you're one of those yeah. very mysterious. I, I started a podcast. Was there, like, do you just, you just don't like the vibe? Um, yeah, it's just not for me, for me personally. Like I love playing record. If I was to do a Twitch if I was to do a live stream in my house, it wouldn't be playing house or techno. It would be playing like funk and soul and stuff like that. It's Cause I'm just like, that sounds so fun though. Like you should do yeah. that. Cause like no people would watch it. Yeah. I'm like, nobody wants to listen to like me play house and techno. Um, I get that. Yeah. I get that. But that's, that's just my personal. I also didn't have decks in my house in, in the UK. So I was like, Nah, just, just not. Were you, were you over there like for majority of the pandemic? All of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Eight, 18 months, I think. Longest I've been there for ages. How, nice. how did it feel? Did you, was it like kind of nice or was it, or did you feel like ups and downs? You want to get out of there? No, ups and downs. I loved where I live is like in the middle of nowhere. It's like no neighbors. My neighbors is my parents. I live next door to my parents. So like I was lucky that I got to like see them throughout the whole of the pandemic. I cooked for them every single night. Like there's not many people that got to see their parents or got to see their family that often. So I was super lucky with that. Um, I was also like live in the country so I could just go out running every day and could kind of just do all of the things that I haven't got to do over the last like six years of touring. Um mm -hmm. So it was really nice. Don't get me wrong. There's some, there was some shit times during it, but genuinely it was better than most. What about you? So, um, where was I? I was in San Diego. Yeah. 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 It was, I don't know. Yeah. Ups and downs, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you like, so you mentioned you cook, is your food page, is that all stuff that you've cooked? Majority of it is. Yeah. Wow. That's so, like very impressive. Some of it isn't some of it is it just depends but yeah that's another thing that i did in the pandemic that no one knows about yet but i filmed a t a like 12 or 11 episodes of like a tv show of like me cooking dude you gotta like release this content i know it's coming like it's definitely coming out this year um, will it be on your youtube i'm probably gonna start a whole new youtube for it um yeah it's kind of fun is this like shit. Will Clark meets Anthony Bourdain vibes or? <laughs> it's, it's Will. I don't know. I can't compare myself to any of those cats really. Can I? Let's be honest. It's just me cooking, just me teaching people to cook or just having a laugh and showing people a few dishes. I, I like cooking, um, but I want to do it as like a regular thing. Um, it's just, again, it's just finding the time and making the time for it. Whereas during the lockdown, I had loads of time. Um, and it's gonna be weird watching it back because I definitely had really long hair because the barbers weren't open at the time. So, um, yeah, I definitely look different. Um, but, you're not willing to do the like at home buzz cut. Well, I this is I don't know why I didn't do this because I was like going bold for years, which is why I always wear a hat. And for years, I was like super self conscious with my hair. And then my barber, I always go to the same barber in the UK and he was like, can I just shave it off already? Like for years. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then literally the first time I had a haircut out of lockdown, I was like, mate, just shave it all off. So I could have just done that myself, but I don't know why I waited. It's a process. Yeah. It's a process. You got to like commit to that. I yeah. get that. I had to work work my way up to it but now i'm yeah. fully bold and i love it it's the best feeling ever so and then you've got the beard going on it's it's perfect the beard makes up for it right <laughs> exactly <laughs> gotta have balance yeah you know? exactly did you did you do anything <laughs> during lockdown that were like that mm. that you that like changed your life as of such i adopted a rabbit oh, wow. and that has certainly changed 
my life. He's, he's amazing, but he's also a handful. So like what happened was this was probably in July of 2020, I was on Craigslist and looking at in the free furniture section. And I see this picture of like a little girl holding a rabbit in her arms and it says like free rabbit. I was like, Oh my God. Okay. So I clicked on it and they explained the situation. And so I went to go look at him the next morning, like not really planning on bringing him home. And I brought him home. Amazing. So yeah, awesome. he's amazing though. And I I've like learned so much about rabbits because <laughs> of it. And yeah, they're sweet little creatures, a what, lot of work, but sweet. What's your rabbit's name? His name is Rupert. Great. Yeah. The, the little girl before had named him Teddy and he does kind of look like a teddy bear, but I was like, I need something like a little more distinguished. Yeah. So we went with Rupert. Rupert. Yeah. I like pets names that are like human names. There's something about it. Right. One of my family friends has a dog called Nigel. It's the best name ever. <laughs> are they English? Yeah. Oh my God. That's, that's so funny. I, a, yeah. I love that too. I think li- it works so well with animals. I know it's a little yeah. sausage dog. And I'm like, this is just amazing. Shout out Aww, Nigel. Right? Nigel. Yeah. But no, um, going back to what you're doing for the rest of the year, have you got any anything planned that you're excited about or like are you just kind of taking it and seeing where the year takes you? Yeah, I mean, I've got a few gigs, like the ones with you, mm-hmm. and then I'm playing um, Hyperspace Festival with like Josh cool. Wink and some other good talent. Um, and that's up in Apple Valley in April. Um, everything is still feels like it's moving around a lot. So I'm trying not to like get my hopes up too much. Um, but other than that, just like working on music, finishing EP and yeah, kind of just taking it like one week at a time. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. We've just done a fucking hour and 15 minutes. I don't know where the time is just flown by. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it went by so fast. It's mad. Um, thanks for coming on. How can people follow you, listen to your music, listen to the label, all of that? good stuff yeah well first of all thank you for having me this was fun no um and yeah they can find label circulate records.com um and then i finally made a website for myself uh and it's leek.digital so they can find all my links there nice and yeah amazing this thanks so fun. much for coming on um i'll see you in march i guess February if Toronto happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, we know that's not gonna happen, don't we? Come on. Really? Okay, well I asked <laughs> Ryan and he's like, ah, like anything's possible. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I really hope it happens because I love that club. Have you played there before? I haven't. It's fun. No. It's good fun. And I love Toronto. It's a fucking great city. Um but I'm not being negative, but I just don't Canada's like North Korea right now. It's on full on lockdown. Just like <laughs> it's terrible. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Um we'll cross our fingers. Let's hope. But if I yeah, it will get postponed and we can work it out. So if I don't Sounds see you good. in February, I'll see you very soon. Um, hopefully. Keep safe. Sounds good. Yeah, likewise, Will. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye. And that is a wrap big love to everybody that listened uh don't forget to subscribe hit the like button give us some reviews um and yeah don't forget to get tickets for the new generation tour keep safe see you next time